everyone, I'm Alexis Araklis, and today we'll be discussing genetic mapping, specifically three-point genetic mapping. To start us off, here are some important terms to know before we dive into the topic. Please take a minute to pause the video to write them down or read over them. Now let's see how genetic mapping relates to my favorite eukaryotic organisms, sea otters. These bundles of joy are marine mammals that have the densest fur of any animal on Earth. This fur contributes to the buoyancy of the sea otter's body because of the air trapped in it, allowing them to float on water. Now let's imagine a genetic condition passed on by a gamete that causes the fur to be thin. This would cause them to sink like a rock. Let's do genetic mapping to see the probability of getting that specific gamete type through crossover events. Chromosome 8, because otters are great, is where we'll be looking at the three linked loci, head color, body size, and fur density. The head color of an otter can be white, the dominant type, or brown, the recessive type, and is designated by the capitalized H or lowercase h. The body size of an otter can be either large, the dominant type, or small, the recessive type, and is designated by the capital S or lowercase s. Lastly, the density of an otter's fur is either thick, the dominant type, or thin, the recessive type, and is designated by the capitalized T or lowercase t. The recombinant distance between head color and size is 18.8 centimorgans apart, and size and fur density are 17.8 centimorgans apart. To simplify things, we'll be looking at one otter named Otto. As you can see, Otto's parents appear breeding homozygous for opposite alleles on their chromosomes. Each parent will be passing on one of their chromosomes to Otto. This causes Otto to be heterozygous for all three of the alleles, so big H, little s, big T, and little h, big s, little t. We're now able to make a genetic map of Otto's loci with the inherited alleles from his parents. His mother's alleles are on the top and his father's alleles are at the bottom. The coefficient of coincidence, or C, for this genetic map is equal to 0.92. Three linked loci allows for four different crossover events to occur. A single crossover at position one, as shown by the hot pink arrows, a single crossover at position two, as shown by the purple arrows, a double crossover as shown by the green arrows, and no crossover, which means we keep the parental gamete types, as shown by the red arrows. Keep in mind, each event produces two different gametes, and I'm only showing one type for these crossover demonstrations. Now that we've won what these crossover events look like, we can use Otto's map and the coefficient of coincidence to see the eight different gamete types and the probability of them being produced from the four different crossover events. I tested a total of 1,424 progenies, and as I said before, each event produces two gamete types, so the probability of a specific gamete resulting is one half of the probability of the event occurring. For example, getting a specific gamete type from the double crossover event is one half times the recombination frequency of R1 and R2 times the coefficient of coincidence, which is one half times 0.188 times 0.78 times 0.92 and gives us 0.0154. Looking at a specific gamete being produced from a single crossover event at position one, we would do one half times the recombination frequency of R1 minus the probability of a double crossover event happening which is 1 half times 0.188 minus 0.0368, which gives us 0.0786. The rest of the probabilities for Otto's gametes are shown as well. Thank you for watching. 